top stories in and around Owlsbury on Owlsbury News. Have your say on recycling in Bucks. Buckinghamshire County Council have said they are now in listening mode as they re- review the recycling centres in the county. With excess spent over three million a year on more recycling centres than other areas, they need to make cuts but want to have your say before they make any decisions. Many councils have already made changes to their recycling centres operations as as the financial pressures on all public services continue. Changes will be needed to the way the County Council's Household Recycling Centre operates from April next year to make the service affordable while maintaining the quality people expect. That's the important message from Bill Chappell, OBE, Cabinet Member for Planning and Environment as the County Council begins the process of gathering views and opinions from local residents about household recycling centres provisions across Buckinghamshire. He said, our recycling centres are popular, well used and highly thought of with more than 70% of all waste received recycled. But the harsh reality is we can't afford to continue as we are due to the financial pressures on all our services. Compared to other councils, we do have more household recycling centres than any other. We are open longer and we do take more types of waste. But all this cost is excess of three million every year to provide. I have the difficult job of getting our costs down, but with the minimum of inconvenience to residents, we seen other authorities look at the overall numbers of sites, opening hours or days, and things like changing for DIY waste, not classed as household waste, but before doing anything, I want an opportunity to listen to what local residents think. We're very much in listening mode at the moment. He added, FCC Regional Director Steve Longdon said, As operators of the Council's Waste Recycling Centre, we are fully aware of the pressures facing all authorities up and down the country. We will, of course, be working closely with Buckinghamshire during the upcoming consultation period and would like to reassure all all service users that it is business as usual across the county. Four public group sessions are now being run so you can have your say. The views from these uh, will then help councillors for public consultation which is expected later in the summer. The reviews only relate to 10 household recycling centres opened by Bucks County Council. Thirsty ducks in Owlsbury get temporary pond. The heat wave is affecting all of us, including some poor ducks in Owlsbury. A few days ago, one dehydrated bird wandered into the middle of the gyratory looking for water. The duck pond on the corner of Walton Street Road is looking almost completely dry. So one woman has taken it up upon herself to do something. Wendy got in touch with us to say she had put out containers of fresh water today. She said some had a drink and the couple had a bath in it. They were so happy. Can we please put a shout out for anyone passing to top up the containers with fresh water? If enough people do it, their water should stay fresh. What a lovely idea from Wendy. And please, anyone passing and sees the water's getting low and you have happened to have bottled water on you at the time, please top it up for the duck. A driverless park and ride for Owlsbury.
A driverless park and ride could be on the cards for Aylesbury as the council attempts to plan for a sharp increase in the town's population and reduce pollution. Last year, Aylesbury was awarded Garden Town status, which means it will receive funding from the government to improve the area, provide new infrastructure. Speaking at a meeting of BCC's Transport Committee on the 17th of July, leader Martin Tet said the council now needs to step up the pace towards improving the town, adding there are exciting opportunities to introduce electric and driverless vehicles. He suggested a park and ride system could be introduced which would see driverless pods take people to the hospital or town centre. Councillor Tet said Alsbury is going to see a lot of growth. That is just a reality of the situation we have and I think the more we can introduce real garden town principles into that growth the better. Not just the new areas but I think we need to filter that into existing town so we don't end up with a two-tiered town. One bit green and pleasant and the other historic town. If you look at the issues of air pollution I think the opportunity for having things like driverless pods from hospital into town is a great way we could potentially look at reducing the air pollution and improving the air quality and at the same time becoming an example town. As we vow is set to bear the brunt of Buck's housing growth as the districts work towards creating their local plan outlining where thousands of homes will be built over the next 15 years. There is a predicted need for 27,000 homes in Owsbury Vale, 9,150 in Chilton and South Bucks whilst Wickham needs to allocate space for 10,925. Vice Chair of the Transport Committee, Councillor Steve Bowles, backed Councillor Tet's suggestions, saying he has already spoken to AVDC, offers about potentially launching a driverless park and ride service. He said it could have hub east, west, south north of Owlsbury. People drive there like a park and ride basically and then you pick up your driverless vehicle when you come into town. Last week BCC's cabinet member for environment Bill Chapel called for more action to be taken to tackle air pollution as one in every 18 deaths in the county is blamed on poor air quality. What a cooker of an idea. Driverless pods get your own tan. That would do ours for the world of good and the air quality would improve. So it's a win-win situation. Under one third of rape cases end up in guilty verdict in Thames Valley. Only around one in five rape cases brought to court by Thames Valley Police result in a conviction. Figures show data released by the Ministry of Justice reveals that in 2017 only 22% of Thames Valley Police's prosecutions for rape were successful. Last year the force brought 155 cases to court and 34 resulted in convictions. The conviction rate is lower than four other sexual offences and it's also worse than other serious crimes such as grievously bodily harm which is 39%. Across England and Wales overall one in five rape cases successfully prosecuted according to the MOJ. This data includes cases where rape is the principal or most serious offence. So, instances where the victim was 
killed would be counted as murder or manslaughter. Dr. Hannah Bose, senior lecturer in criminology at Tyneside University, said that whilst it was hard to judge without knowing the details of cases, the figures were particularly surprising. It shows something is going wrong, either with charging decisions being made by the Crown Prosecution Service or what's happening in court. Something is going wrong because the evidence required in a rape case to get a case brought to court is so high, any question marks and the case is unlikely to go forward. That's why it is so frustrating when people say there are loads of false rape cases because it's not true. Dr. Bowers is also concerned these figures will put people off from reporting rape allegations. She said it's particularly horrible and pretty lengthy process anyway. Often the victim feels like they're on trial. If someone said to you, do you want to have your whole life exposed for around a one in five chance of success, you'd probably say no. Dr. Bow thinks there is need to be a complete reassessment of how rape cases are brought to court as what is happening now is clearly not working. The data shows that prosecutions for Thames Valley Police are getting more successful. In 2016, 19% of rape cases brought to court resulted in convictions. The processes of rape trials has been in the news after several collapsed at the turn of the year over problems with disclosure of evidence. The trial of Liam Allen was stopped at Croydon Crown Court after an officer had failed to find key evidence including 57,000 messages between the alleged victim and Mr Allen. Three other trials were halted within the next month leading to CPS to review all rape cases that were being brought to court. Cleveland Police currently has the highest conviction rate for rape cases in England and Wales which is 32% whilst in Cumbria only 9% of cases brought to court were successful. A CPS spokesman said, We recognise that rape and serious sexual offences are some of the most complex cases prosecuted by the CPS and we have worked hard in recent years to improve how we deal with these cases. We have almost doubled the number of specialist prosecutors in our dedicated rape and serious sexual offences unit and improve the support we offer victims through criminal proceedings. In recognition of the unique challenges involved in prosecuting these offences and taking them to trial, the CPS is focused on building strong cases with all available evidence including CCTV, eyewitnesses account and mobile phone evidence and supporting victims through the process. Rape is a serious allegation and there is a lot of evidence to be found before they can even think about taking it to the CPS. Like I say, they're using CCTV, mobile phone footage and text messaging and things like this. They have to be sure of the evidence because they're dealing with people's lives here. Someone could go to prison for a long time and could be innocent, but if they've got all the evidence there in front of them, then they have a better chance of a conviction holding. Gang make off with chainsaws from Princess Risborough shop. A Facebook post has gone viral after a gang targeted a hardware shop in Princess Risborough, Bryant's of Risborough, of Tame Road, on Tuesday. CCTV has been released by the shop of men police want to talk to in relation to this incident. The group were all allegedly armed with detagging tools and made off with two chainsaws. All three were white, of heavy build and in tracksuits, hoodies, tops and baseball caps. 
Shop say they were possibly of Eastern European descent. In their Facebook post, Bryant said, Keep your eyes peeled in store. They appear to be shopping to order. Serial numbers provided to the police and STIHL, so will appear as stolen if worked on under warranty, etc. Difficult to politely convey how angry we are, but a massive thanks to some of our customers who offered their assistance at the time. The post has now been shared over 600 times with other tradespeople saying they may also have been targeted by the same group. If you have any information on this case, please call Police on 101 quoting the crime reference number 43180218192. Alternatively, you could phone Crime Stoppers anonymously. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave comments below. Oh, don't forget to share and like our videos. Thank you.